Your 
Man, things are changing, aren't they? Every day. New statistics, new data leads to new directives, <laughs> new courses of action, new plans that are changing for churches and individuals and businesses and organizations and schools. Things are changing all the time. And so we said, let's start talking together about the one thing that we know is going to happen, things are going to change. Things are changing. We live in a changing world. These are changing times. So how can we be prepared to be people, individuals, collectively as a church, people that are prepared to meet the needs of this changing world in our changing times? So because the, one of the things that, that is going to be constant that we see all the time, one of the needs that, that we have as, as people is that we have the need for power. We feel powerless in different areas, in different arenas, at different times in our life. And a lot of people are looking for how do they have power in just the day-to-day -day existence of, of their life. They're looking for something or someone, some way to, to get some power to be able to, to get through. Now, the message of, of God is, 
a message of hope. And that message of hope is that power is available to you and I. That it responds to the, the, one of the deepest needs that we have is the need for power. Our, our, our need for strength, our need to be able to survive, not just thrive, but, but to, not, not just to survive even, but to, to actually thrive and to move through it, it come out better on the other side of things. So the question is, where do we get the power to live in this crazy world that we live in with crazy things happening all the time where, where bad things happen to good people, where, where sick, twisted, nasty things happen in a world where oftentimes we did nothing to deserve it. It just, it just happens. Where do we get the strength in those kinds of situations? Where do we get the power to, to live in a world that is filled with difficult questions? Where do we get the power to just to keep on going in just the every day of our lives? Where does, where does all that come from? So the message of, of hope, the message of God, is that you and I don't have to live powerless lives. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be weak. In fact, we don't have to look anyplace else except for God is that source of power. That's what I want to talk about today because I think God says to us, he would say to you, I want to be that source of power for you. I want to be that for you. In fact, one of the names of of God in the Bible is the name El Shaddai. And the name El Shaddai means I am the all-powerful God. That's what that means. God knew that you and I would have a need for power in our lives. And so what he's saying is, I'm the answer to that. I've got what you're looking for. I've, I've got that power in abundance if you'll just tap into me. And so that's what we're going to look at today. And God doesn't want us just to look at it. He doesn't want us just to talk about it. He, he says, I want you to have access to it. I don't want it just to be a theoretical idea. I don't want this just to be a spiritual discussion. I want this to be a practical reality of your life that you can tap in to my power. And that's, that's really what the good news is. In fact, listen to this in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20. It says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but a matter of power. He, he, didn't just, he didn't just say it. He says, this is something I want you to have access to. In, in Psalm 68, it says, God is awesome. He gives power and he gives strength to his people. Now, most of us here, you're probably listening, and, and you may not even question God's power. You probably somewhere inside of you would just agree that God is all-powerful. That's probably not the question. That's not the issue that you're hung up on. You, you go outside on a beautiful day, you, you go into the mountains, you go to the water, you go to places and you see outside, you see a beautiful sunrise or a sunset and you just think, oh man, how, how powerful God is. And so maybe it's not that question that whether God has that power or not. The question for you and I oftentimes is the hang up is, is that power available to me? Can I have access to that? Can I get me some of that power? And if so, how, how do I get it? Those are the questions that you and I have. And I just want to say, yes, yes, you can have God's power. You can have access to God's power because he's promised it. Now, before we talk about how to do that, let me, let me just paint a picture and get us all up to, on the same page here. Just try to make a connection so maybe your source of, of power where you're lacking is different than other people in your household, other people that you connect with on a regular basis. But, but there's all different areas in our lives where, where God says, you can count on my power. So let me give you just some examples, first of all. Here's the first one. God says, you can count on and you can have access to my power when you're tired. You ever feel tired? You ever just feel worn out, just completely exhausted? You can count on God's power when you're tired. By virtue of the fact that we live in suburban Chicagoland, we, we live in this area that is, is just go, 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 go. We, we go out and achieve it so that we can get everything that we want, anything that we want. And then once we get it, we, we're often too tired to just enjoy it. Somebody said this. I thought this was funny. Somebody said, why stop and smell the roses when you can drive right through them? That, that ought to be our motto sometimes. Because we're just go, 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 and we just get exhausted. And, and obviously, that there are some things that you and I could do to slow down the pace of our lives. But I want you to know, in the midst of that, God makes a promise to us. In Isaiah chapter 40, he says this, The Lord is the everlasting God. He never grows weary or tired. 
He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Those who trust the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Some of you need to memorize that verse. Some of you need to write that someplace where you see it every day. You need to inscribe it on your toothbrush. You need, you need to tattoo it on you someplace. You need to shave it into the side of your dog so that you can, well, I don't care where you put it, you, you got to remember that verse. He offers strength to the weak. He never grows tired. He never grows weary. God is unlimited in his power. He never gets tired. He never gets weary. He never goes to bed. He, he, he has unlimited energy. He created the entire universe. Jesus rose from the dead, and he's like, what's next? You know what I mean? He's always got unlimited power at his disposal. Would you like to tap into that kind of power? It's accessible to you. You can access that. Now, here's the second kind of weakness that we have. Another time when you can count on God's power is when you feel like you've got nothing left to offer. When you have drained it, when you have wrung it out, when maybe you're in a relationship and you just feel like, you know what, I have given and I have given and I have given and I got nothing less left else to give. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's with one of your kids and, and you just feel like, I just don't know what they want. I don't know what they're looking for. I, I just don't know what they want from me. What, what more can I give? I got nothing left to give. Maybe it's Maybe it's with your job and you're just swimming and you're in over your head and you're like, I, I just, I don't even know what else to do anymore. I've given my very best and I don't think I can give anymore. God says, I will give you power when you feel like you have nothing left to give. My power will show up when you're weakest. I, I love what the example that we see in the, the life in the New Testament of the Apostle Paul. He, the Bible describes that he had some kind of affliction. And he pleaded with God, God, would you just take this away from me? I, I got nothing else. I can't do anymore. And God says, no, 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 my power shows up best in your weakness. And I love what then Paul learns. And, and he goes on as he matures and he says, now I'm glad and I boast in my weakness. I'm, I'm glad that I can be a living demonstration of God's power to everybody else that's watching. watching. Instead of me showing off in my own power, and my own strength, I can show God's power in his strength, and his abilities. So God makes a promise. When you're, when you're feeling inadequate, when you feel like you've got nothing more to give, when your engine is, is seized up and you've got nothing else, he wants to invade your life with power. And if you need to tap into that kind of power, it's accessible to you. Now, here's another area where we can count on God's power. It, it's, it's when we're in pain. Now, there's something that's, common to all of humanity is that we experience pain. You're, you're experiencing pain. The people around you have experienced pain or are experiencing pain or will be experiencing pain. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's a pain that comes from a family relationship that's broken. It's not right. That's, that's just rubbing against us or, or it's a marriage situation. And, and, and you just, you just feeling pain all the time. In that relationship. Maybe it has to do with your own physical bodily pain and, and you wake up every day and you know it's just going to be another struggle that that pain is still there and it's still, it hasn't gone away and it's that same old affliction and it just, it just drags on. It's another day, it's another pain and, and that's a pain. Some of you, as we've said, are in less than ideal work situations that there's pain when you end up going back to work if, you, if you've been off work or maybe it's the, the pain of, of, of the fact that you just have unrealistic expectations in, in the workplace. You, you feel like you just can't, you can't get there. It's an impossible deadline. And the grind of that is just grinding you down. And that, that just brings pain into your life. And you're carrying that with you. Some of you have gone through a pain of separation, separating from a relationship, separation through a divorce, separation. And those kinds of things brings pain. Maybe it's separation because you lost a loved one. That brings pain into our life. Maybe it's just a friendship that just is the shell of what it once used to be. And there's pain in those kinds of relationships. Some of you are, are feeling the pain of financial pressures. It's, you're, you're on the verge of bankruptcy. You're on the verge of, of losing it all. You, and, and there's pain that comes with that. Some of it comes, if, if you're a parent, you feel pain. You, you see your kids making decisions and making choices and going down pathways that you know are, are just wrought with all kinds of pain of their own. So that brings you pain. 
Some of you have the pain of, of just being single. You're, you're sick of being single. You, you want to, you're, you're not dating anyone and marriage just seems a long way off. And it just seems like an unrealistic dream. And that's a kind of pain too. At least I don't want to minimize any of that. There is no shortage of difficulty and pain in our lives. And you're not immune from it. I'm not immune from it. Now, if you're not a Christ follower, and you're just listening in and you're, you're just checking this out, maybe from a distance, maybe you've been clicking through and following through on Facebook and you just stopped in for a little bit. I, I just want you to know, I, I've got Christian friends that have gone through all kinds of pain. And, and they will tell you, just like I would tell you in my, from my own experience, that they've walked through the deepest, darkest valleys of their life. But they could tell you with 100% conviction and certainty and integrity, that if it wasn't for God's power, if it wasn't for God's strength, they would have never made it on the other side. I know that's true in my life. I know that I could say that. I'm just saying, where do you go in your pain? Where do you go in time of pain? God promises power in pain. Do you want to tap into that kind of power? It's accessible to you. It's available to you. Now, we can also count on God's power in, in another area. There's all kinds of areas. Let me just give you another example here. It's when we're tempted. When we're tempted to cross a line that we know that we shouldn't cross. When we're tempted to go into an arena that we know we shouldn't, we shouldn't be in. One of the reasons, though, that pain comes into our life oftentimes is because we don't have the, the power to say no. And we get pulled into something and we walk into something before we look, but before long, we, we look back and we have waved bye-bye to that line that we said we would never cross a long time ago. In Romans 7, it says, I often find that I have the will to do good. I, I want to do what's good. I don't want to cross that line, but I don't have the power. I, I want to in my heart of hearts, but I just I don't have that power. I don't know if you can relate to that. I can relate to that. I, well, I just don't, I don't feel like I have the power to, to push back temptation is out there and it's pulling at us and it's pull, and we, we're getting pushed to do it sometimes. There, there was a bumper sticker that said, lead us not into temptation. I'm perfectly capable of finding it all on my own. I, I don't need you to show me the way. I know the way to temptation. The temptation is in, inevitable, but, but the good news is that God says we will not be tempted in any way beyond our capacity to be able to resist it. You won't be tempted beyond your capacity to get out of that. God is faithful. He will give you the power to say no when you're tempted. You name it. Whatever the temptation is. Maybe it's to eat eat that chocolate cake. Maybe it's a temptation to gossip. Maybe it's a temptation for internet pornography. Maybe it's a temptation to, to, to shade the truth a little bit on your resume to cheat a little bit with somebody or something. And so and you're, you're tempted and you can see it and you're, you're dancing on that line. I'm telling you, God gives you the power to say no. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, every temptation that has come your way, has come my way, come my way, is the kind that normally comes to people, but God keeps his promise and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond your power to resist. At the time that you're tempted, he will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you a way out. The promise is there is always a way out. The question is, do you take it? The question is, do do we take it? God says, I want to give you power for that way out. So do you need access to that kind of power to overcome temptation? You can have access to it. The bottom line is, If you're burned out and tired, God says, I want to give you my power. If you're feeling inadequate in your life, like you just don't measure up, like you just don't have what it takes, God says, I want to give you the power to to deal with that. If you're dealing with some kind of devastating pain and hurt, God says, I want to give you power. If you're dealing with some kind of pull or, or feeling pushed into temptation, God says, I want to give you power to resist that. That's the good news. That's the hope that I want to share with you today that you, can't, you don't have to live powerless lives. We don't have to live weak, pushover lives. There is power that is available to us. It is accessible to us. Power to change us. But it doesn't come automatically. It doesn't just happen. In fact, I've, lot of, I've seen a lot of people who are Christians, a lot of people who have 
have been a part of the church their entire life, but they are not living with any power beyond themselves. They, they may have salvation. They may be all, all, all content in so many other ways. They may feel God's presence and they may feel warmth and, and all that, but they are not living with God's power. God, God says, I want to give you power to live beyond where you are. See, what God does is he does the impossible. All he asks of us is that we do the possible. He provides us the power, but we do the, the possible. We do what we can do, and then he does the rest. He makes up the rest. We do the possible with faith, and then God does the impossible. So let me give you just some action steps here. Just literally ABCs. It, it's as simple as that. And I don't mean to make it simplistic, but I just I want you to remember this, and I think this is great to, to, to share with you. ABC. A stands for this. How do you tap into this power? Letter A, admit your weakness. Admit that you're weak. Admit that you can't do it on your own. You got to start there. If you want God's power, if you want to tap into that, admit that you're weak. You admit your lack of power. You admit that you don't have it all together. You admit that, that, you, that you can't solve every problem on your own. Now, for some of us, this is tough because we think that we are God. <laughs> we think... We think that we've got it all together and that we can handle it all, that we can do this. And, and if you're thinking that, I mean, who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? You can't control everything in your life. Just look around what's happening in our lives right now. There's so much that is out of our control. You can't, you can't reach every goal that you want to set. You, you can't make as much money as you always want to, that you've always dreamed. You're human. You're weak. You're, you're losing muscle mass. You're, you're, your hair is getting grayer or it's falling out. and your, your skin is getting wrinkly. Am I encouraging you enough yet? I mean, you are weak. You, you don't have the strength in and of yourself. If you're dependent on yourself, you are woefully inadequate. And we pretend to be self-sufficient, that we can do it all, that we've got it all. And the key word there is pretend. We pretend that we have it all together. But I'm telling you, if you want access to God's power, you start here. You drop to your knees and you say, God, I'm weak. God, I can't do this on my own. If you want God's power in your life, you have to at some point let go of that steering wheel and give it to him. And you say, I'm just going to sit shotgun. I'm going to let you just take the driver's seat. I'm going to let you take control. And when you do that, what it does is it opens up God's channel, the blessing. God's channels for, for, for power to, to start flowing into your life. But you got to give up that power. you got to give up that control. You have to admit that you're weak. It starts there. And here's letter B. Be connected to him. Be connected to the source of power. You want power? You've got to be connected to the, that power. Now listen, those of you that know me know that I am, I am quite the technician. I, I, uh, I have this theory when it comes to all things plugged in, that things work best when they're plugged in. <laughs> they, you and I work best when we're plugged in to the creator of the universe. Listen, if, you, if you've got a toaster... I don't care how beautiful that toaster is. I don't care how polished. I don't care how much you paid for that toaster. I don't care if that toaster was in the church kitchen for its entire existence. I don't care what the net worth is. I don't care if that toaster is not plugged in. It's not going to work. And if you and I are not plugged in, we are not going to work. Now, some of you are saying, I, I'm already a Christian. I'm already connected to God. But, but, but you know why you don't live with power? You know why you're not living with that power? It's because we, we make ungodly choices because we're choosing other things. and We're doing things on our own agenda. Think about it. We, we have this idea that we do things on our own agenda, and then we expect God arrogantly to, to bless whatever it is that we want to do. Think about this. Would it make sense for God to supernaturally renew our strength, to just to fill us with strength and to fill us with power so that we could continue to pursue something outside of his design for our life? That doesn't make any sense. Now, Jesus understood this whole connection theory when he talked about that well 
well-worn verse that we use a lot in John 15, where he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You stay connected to me. If you stay connected to me and I stay connected to you, that you will produce much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, there may be some of you that say, it, it just... That just seems so hard. I just don't know what to do to, to get plugged into God's power. It's not hard to get connected to God. It's not hard at all. You know what's hard? It, what's hard is to get customer service on the phone when you, when you call someplace and, and you get this automated thing. And you say, if you need help, just say help. Help! Oh, you need help. Yeah, of course. That, that's hard to get an actual person to talk to on the other side of the phone. But when you're talking about God, that's not hard. It's not hard to get connected. God's not like that at all. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says that he stands at the door and he knocks. And he's waiting. He, he's right there waiting. He, he's, he's on alert. He, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for us to open up the door. So listen, if you're just contemplating this whole Christianity thing and, and you're searching for answers in the midst of all this craziness that our world is going on, listen, just understand this. God is wait, just waiting for you to say yes. He's waiting for you to say yes and open up the door and, and let him come in. Let, let him connect with your life. Now, if you're already a believer, if you've already been convinced of all this and you've already been, been connected that way, but yet you feel like you're living outside of God's power, you have to stay connected. You have to stay connected to that relationship with God. And that's why we started Lifeline, is to help people like you to be connected and to stay connected. If you want to grow, we want to help you to do that. You have to admit that you're weak. You have to be connected to him. And the letter C stands for choose. Choose God's way. Choose God's way with faith that God's power will show up. Now, this is the hardest one because this is the faith component where we can't always see things, how they're going to work out. The Bible, though, makes it very, very clear that God's power and my faith are connected. That, that, that there is a connection between those two things. For me to get God's power, I've got to step out in faith. I have to choose God's way. That, that's what that means. Choose God's way means to step out in obedience to what he calls us to do before that power shows up. We step out before that power shows up. He, he wants us to take action before he supplies that power. Now, some of you are thinking, wait a second. You mean I have to step first and, and act as if I have the power even before I have the power in order to get that power? Yeah, that's the faith component. That's the hard part of this. That's where faith enters in. Think about what the Bible says. What, what is faith? In Hebrews 11, it says, it is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. You choose God's way. You step in God's direction. You make godly choices. See, B and C, they, they go together. You be connected to him, and you make God good godly choices, and you step in his direction. And when you step in his direction, th those decisions become clear. They don't always become easier, but they become clear. Like, okay, now I, now I see the direction that I'm supposed to go. I, I choose God's way, and God says, okay, my, my power is going to show up now. You've stepped out. Now here comes my power. Let me open it up. He sees our faith, and then he turns on and opens up the floodgates of his power. You could read the Bible from cover to cover, and there's story after story after story of, of this principle, that you choose God's way, and then God's power shows up. In the Old Testament, if you remember the story, the people of God, the Israelites, were in Egypt, and they were in slavery. They were in captivity, and Pharaoh was in charge. He was the leader of Egypt, and he had all these Israelites as slaves. And it was a terrible situation for the Israelites. And these are God's people. And so Moses steps up. God uses him, and he was representing God's people. And he goes to Pharaoh, and he says, God says, let my people go. Let, let them go. Get, let them out of slavery. God wants them out of Egypt, out of slavery. And Pharaoh just keeps saying, no, 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 and no. And these plagues keep coming on Egypt. And, and finally, after the 10th plague, Pharaoh puts up his hands and he goes, okay, 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 okay. I'll let them go. They, they can go. And so Moses marches the people out of Egypt. 
Now imagine, you've been a slave for all these years, and now you're free. And so they're dancing, and they're singing, and they're celebrating, and they're living the life, and they're having a good old time marching out of Egypt. Meanwhile, dot, 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 back in Egypt, Pharaoh all of a sudden is like, what in the world? What have I just done? Who's, who's going to take care of my household? Who's going who's to make these bricks in the hot sun? Who, who's going to clean the bathrooms? Who's going to do all this stuff? Who's going to take care? Who, I just got rid of all of our slave labor. And so he calls out the Egyptian National Guard, and he says, hey, go get them. I just let them go. You go get them. Now, again, imagine you're an Israelite, and you're dancing, and you're singing, and you're celebrating that you're free, and all of a sudden, you look over your shoulder, and you see the Egyptian army coming in after you, and they obviously are not there to wish you well. <laughs> they're there to capture you again and bring you back to Egypt. And so they're coming on one side, and on the other side, in front of you, is the, the sea. So they're chasing you into the sea. You, you are dead end. And all of a sudden, they're thinking, we're going to get killed. This is it. We're, 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 they, they start going crazy. They, even, they start moaning and groaning. They say to Moses, it says in, in Exodus 14, it says they, they turned against Moses and they complained, why did you bring us out of Egypt, out, out here into the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? I mean, what, we couldn't die in Egypt? We had, we had to come out here to die? Our slavery was better than, than for us to die out here in the wilderness. And sometimes a lot of us will say the same thing, don't we? We just say, oh, God, why, why, would, why, why would you, uh, my, my powerless life was better than, than stepping out into faith and, and this, this uncertainty that I know to, to trust you. It was better that I didn't have any faith. But Moses tells the people, don't be afraid. Just wait and watch what God is going to do. Now, this is where the story gets really good. And we know what happens. You know what happens, if you, especially if you've seen the movie. Or if you've been to Universal Studios and you've seen what happens there. Is that they're up against the sea and God speaks. And the sea parts. It, the waters part right in front of them. God's power arrives as they took the step of faith. They began to move forward. And God parts the sea. And the principle is, they choose God's way. And God's power shows up. That's what happens. They choose God's way. And God's power showed up. Moses didn't know how God was going to intervene. He didn't know how this was going to turn out. He just trusted in God's power. And they kept on walking. And so God says to you and I today, listen, I will honor your faith. I will honor your display of faith by the display of my supernatural power. And I will give you power along the way. As you step, I will bring power. As you step in faith, I will bring my power. You step in faith, I will bring my power. That's his promise to us. Now, if you're like me, though, you'd rather have it the other way. You think, I'd rather have the power before I get into the crisis. Why don't you give me the power, and then I'll take that step. You give me the power, and then I'll take that step. And he says, no, that's, that's not the way it works. I will give you my power, when I see your step of faith. And so what I want to say to you is that same God that intervened at the edge of that sea, that same God that intervened at that tomb where Jesus was buried, is the same God that's with that same power that says to you and I today, I want to infuse life. I want to infuse your life with my power. But you got to admit that you're weak. You've got to be connected to me. And you've got to choose my way. You've got to choose the pathway of faith. You've got to choose to walk by faith. And then my power will show up. And you know why I know that that works? Because the Bible has shown that. His promises have been true over and over and over again. I've seen it in the lives of tons of people. I've seen it in the lives of, of people in our church. I, I've seen it in my own life. I know that that's, the, that, that, that that's true. That you step and then God's power comes. So here's my challenge to you as I close. Listen, if you're, again, if you're just kind of just kind of listening in and with a, with a cautious, guarded, but curious heart, I, I just want to say to you, take that step of faith and watch how God's power will show up in your life. Keep, keep engaging in conversations like this. Keep listening. Keep seeking. Keep asking. Keep knocking. And that door that God, to God's power will open for you. Keep engaging in this whole thing. 
And for those of you that, that maybe are already convinced that you already want this and you're already connected to God's power, but, you, but yet you don't, you don't feel that power all the time. I just want to say to you, listen to what the scripture says in Isaiah 40. Those who hope in the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and they will not grow weary. So what happens is we do the possible by faith and God does the impossible. We do the possible by faith and God does the impossible. Let me show you how this works out. Let's say your marriage has lost its romance. You do the possible. You treat your spouse the way you believe God wants them to be treated. And then God shows up and does the supernatural. He does, he does the impossible. Maybe you have a friendship that is broken, that is fractured, that is on the rocks, that is, that is torn, that is, a, again, just a shell of its former self. You pick up the phone. You do the possible. You, do the, you, you go ask for forgiveness because nobody wants to do that. You say, is that what you want to do? No, it's not what you want to do, but it's possible. It's the right thing to do. You do the possible and let God do the impossible. When you move in the direction of God that God wants you to take, his power will show up. You do the possible with faith. Let God do the impossible. And if you've never opened up your life to God this way, would you just say, God, I, I, I want to take that step of faith. Would you give me the power that I need to live this way? I want to pray for us as we close. And my prayer is just simply this, is that, God, that you would show us what it is that, that we can do to take that step. What is that step that you're asking us to take, the, the possible thing? You haven't asked us to do the impossible. You just asked us to, to do what we could do. So we're going to do the possible. We're going to step out. And we're going to ask that your power would show up. We, we believe in faith that your power will show up in our life to do the extraordinary in our midst. We live in a world that is changing fast and um, we don't have the answers. We don't have the strength. We don't have the power. We don't have the stamina, but you do. And so as we step in faith and we, we choose you and we stay connected to you and we admit our weakness to not be able to do this on our own, we know that your power will show up. We thank you for that and we're trusting you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.